Every web service that we're going to create is going to have a corresponding uh, web services descriptive language document. Now we want to talk about the contents and the components that are contained inside of this WSDL document. So first of all, we just look at the basic definition here. It's going to be broken down into two significant pieces. One is going to be the serverless implementation definition. We simply want to identify where the web service happens to be and how to contact it, port-based information, things like that. Now this is going to have two significant sub-pieces to it. There's going to be a service piece and there's going to be a port piece. Now the job of the service piece is to identify all of the related entry points. So as far as identifying and connecting to this particular service, we need to identify exactly where it actually is, what physical endpoint on the web it's related to, uh, and also how it can be addressed. The other aspect is a binding information, a URL pattern information. Uh, the actual IP address potentially inside of here of, of where the service happens to be. So we have port information, we have service related information. Uh, this is going to identify where the actual service happens to be. Now once we've identified the service, the next portion of the uh, WSDL document is going to take place called the service interface definition. Okay, so now I've gotten to the web service. What kinds of things am I going to be able to do? What kind of data are we going to be working with? So first we have a binding component piece here. Now the binding piece and the port type, uh, the message, and then the type of information itself, these are all the different subcategories inside of the service interface definition. So I'm thinking about the binding type, we're talking about message format, communication protocol aspects. So in this particular case uh, we're talking about the SOAP aspects of creating SOAP types of messages. On the abstract type we're talking about uh, the different kind of information and data that's going to be transmitted. So for every port address point we have here, what kind of data are we going to be expecting to be transmitted through here? Uh, the next piece up is the message type and just talking about the data type. So we saw SOAP messages before. We talked about the fact that when we're accepting information and accepting data, I want to validate the data as the appropriate type. Maybe it's integer information, maybe it's character information. So in this particular realm here is where we're going to identify uh, the corresponding data type definitions for all of our incoming and outgoing messages. And the last piece here is the, the type area here where we're just simply defining uh, operations, input and output operations. So if you're an object-oriented developer, uh, this would be synonymous for defining uh, different types of methods uh, that we can actually execute and call in this particular process. So all this information that we have here is going to be used to describe my individual web service. This data is then going to be transmitted and stored inside of the registry. So the registry is where the customer can come and find out this information about my particular web service.